I first of all want to congratulate CPAM Tamil Nadu State Committee to took the leadership of the campaign on gender issues. Gender issues are not only the issue of women and should be led by the whole society at CPIM took the leadership of the gender issues and the campaign. Again, I want to thanks, express my thanks to present us some books, important books instead of bouquets. I got two books. One is about Alexandra Kolondoy, the great revolutionary, the great leader of Russian revolution. This is the collected works of collection of Alexandra Kolondoy's works and edited by Parvati Menon. When she was elected, Alexandra Kolondoy was elected in Russian government after the Russian Great Russian Revolution 1917. She became commissar and director. She gave the leadership to pass some important laws for the emancipation of women in Russian government, revolutionary government. The book deals with her essays about her experience in the Russian Revolution. The other book is Listen to My Case. It is written by Justice K. Chandru. He is very famous. He is also a legendary fighter, especially on the lead and women issue. This is the experience of his court, court experience when women approach the courts of Tamil Nadu and to precious gifts, a special thanks for that. I want to speak about the subject. Our subject today is the issue of the atrocities against women, violence and atrocities against women. Why it is happening? That is the important question. Whether women are the second sex from the time beginning itself, we are finding the answer, finding the roots of the oppression of women. We are trying to do that. Actually, Communist Party, the left, find the correct answer, what is the roots of the suppression or oppression of women in the society. Party finds or the communist ideology finds that it is not according to the society, it is according to the mode of society, social relationship and when it occurs in the society, that is the most important uh, question. Engels gives the answer in his famous writing the origin of family, private property, and state. Engels states that the oppression starts when the occurrence of private property and the family. And the exploitation happens after that. Communist Party is thinking about that and also CPIM have enacted, had enacted party's perspective on women's issue and tax in 2005, according to the left ideology and why the capitalist development in India was undertaken and what is happening in India and in our uh, states. And CPIM campaigned this party's perspective on women's issue and tax after that, and have a very good campaign and discussion throughout the country. And uh, we think we are we decided to have it in grassroots level. It is not happened in grassroots level. We should have it to take this discussion in the grassroots level itself. What happened in India after independence? We all know that the pre-independent days. Indian society is in a feudalist society, feudalist mode of society. And after independence, 
when the capitalism become to grow the something happened here that the capitalist mode of society didn't overthrow the feudalist mode of society joining hand in hand without eradication of pre capitalist relations the bourgeoisie tried to develop the capitalist mode of society in india now in indian society these two things are existing one side the development of capitalism and the consumerist culture etc that suppressed movement and uh, the mode of that society is thinking women is a commodity and uh, second sex at the same time the feudalist mode of society is also existing bourgeois landlord government is existing in india in party program we explained that our indian independence after independence the government of india is a government led by the big bourgeoisie and joining hands with the feudal culture feudalism feudalism and also depending or having collaboration with foreign capital that is why the exploitation is rampant in india we cannot get rid of this exploitation or em- the emancipation of women will never happen completely without demolishing this kind of government or policy in india so we have to fight against both feudalist attitude and also the capitalist consumerist culture in our country marxism traces the roots of women's subordination in such kind of growth in the society i am coming to kerala's scenario that before independence we have a great struggle in kerala against the feudalist culture here in tamil nadu also periyar he is a we can say scientifically periyar fight fought against the suppression or oppression of women we can say the first feminist in tamil nadu and he is deadly against the, even the dress code in tamil nadu and very inspiration we got inspiration from periyar himself here in kerala also there are so many social reformers who fought against the feudal culture especially the exploitation of women there in that period in 1930s and 40s in kerala our society uh, in our society women are suffering under this landlordism august bible wrote in his book famous book women in past present and future that in kerala kerala uh, was not formed at that time in that area in malabar the landlordism is more severe than the slavery in greece in so there are some customs according to the landlords for the poor women women cannot uh, cover the upper part of their body and there are some cruel customs such as the virginity breaking is the right of a landlord that is that was the custom in that place when a poor peasant's daughter get married she cannot go directly to his her husband's house she had to go to the landlord's house and it was the landlord who has the right to break her virginity and after only after that she can go to her husband's house there are so many heart touching incidents in kerala at that time a poor woman called cheria a peasant woman she married a agricultural worker called raman and cheria was not ready to 
go to the landlord's house the first night. She refused that. And Raman took her to a remote place to hide her from the landlord. But the landlord's people go in search of her and they went to that hiding place and they abused her and they raped her. When they came to her hut to get her raped, she pleaded that, I'm not well. My eyes are not well because of the conjunctivity. Please allow me to escape or don't uh, disturb me this time. Please give me freedom. But the landlord said, I am not coming here to look at your eyes. I want something else. And brutally raped that, that, that lady. And when Raman came back home after his work, he found that his beloved wife is lying there with blood coming from their eyes and her, both of her eyes lost sight after that incident. But Charya was a very brave lady and Charyamma went to the Kisan Sabha meetings and spoke in that meeting bravely and uh, she spoke to give inspiration to other ladies to fight against the landlordism. Then only we can get independence and identity as brave women. And that Charyamma, not only one lady, there are so many ladies where there are in Communist Party workers, among Communist Party workers and also this agricultural front. They were fighting against landlordism to get freedom. So we can find that the, the suppression of women or the exploitation of women is according to the mode of society, according to social relationships. But after independence, everyone expected that after independence, we all get freedom and women also get freedom, but nothing happened after independence. And the situation is same in other parts of India. We can find that the condition of Dalits and women are the same. They are under slavery after the long years of independence also. What is the telling us? We should have to fulfill our democratic revolution. That is why CPIM in its program written that our next aim or our, the, our aim is to fulfill the democratic revolution. That is people's democratic revolution is CPIM's aims. Bourgeoisie didn't complete the aim of democratic revolution and they are hand in hand with the feudalist culture. All the superstitions are here. Casteism is here. Operation against women is here. Atrocities are here. So, CPM slogan is to complete the democratic revolution under the leadership of the people. That is people's democratic revolution. And the program of people's democratic revolution states after the People's Democratic Revolution, what will be the status of women? What is the program of CPM to fulfill the empowerment of women? That is very clear. The first agricultural revolution is must and land reform is the very important thing and the, the exploitation by the casteism should be abolished and there should be some laws should be enacted to abolish the caste apartheid or caste system, uh, caste-based atrocities. And there are so many things. And then only we can achieve the complete freedom of women. In Kerala, 1957, through the election, a left government was in office. 
under the leadership of E.M. Shankaran Namudiripal, a left front, left government came to power in Kerala. What is the difference? Some people are saying every politician and every political parties are the same. We cannot think so. There are some differences in Kerala. After 1957, there is a very good advancement in Kerala, especially in the status of women. Atrocities are there. I am came to coming to that. But there are there is a very good improvement in the status of women in Kerala. The literacy rate that is very high in Kerala. Women literacy rate it is more than 90 in Kerala. And the human development index in some indices Kerala is in the forefront. As you all know, Kerala is a low income state. The revenue income is too less in Kerala. And Kerala became a miracle in some of the development indices. How we achieved that? That is the question. In human development index, Kerala is in the forefront. And the participation of women in the society, there is a very good increase. But in the workforce, we didn't achieve that. And to prevent all the atrocities, that is another thing, another reverse thing in Kerala. In 1957 onwards, in Kerala legislature, we have some people friendly, women friendly laws. We enacted some laws there. 1957, the first days after, just after the taking the oaths, our government, Kerala government, enacted uh, or declared an ordinance before enacting the law. The before 16 days, the left government passed an ordinance on eviction stay. Staying the eviction. Up to that time, the landlords were evicting the poor people from the lands, and the poor women are not getting education. Girls are not getting education. Even men are not getting education. Only the those who have money are getting were getting education at that time. And when we passed that ordinance, even before 20 days of the office, uh, we came to office in Kerala. After that, we got a grip in the land where we were staying in Kerala. And in that same government, Joseph Mundasheri Master, the first education minister, passed the education law and decided to have the public education institutions, even in the grassroots level. We started to build schools and we started to educate the poor persons, uh, children. And that is the beginning stage. And also, Kersetan also, Dr. Ayar Menon, he passed a law on public health system and the people get good this treatment uh, or health facilities in public sector. And after that, we came several times into office in Kerala under the leadership of Communist Party. There are more than five governments that were in Kerala now also left parties ruling in Kerala. And each and every time when Communist Party came to office, we enacted certain revolutionary laws to maintain the equality or to make equal the citizens in Kerala. And the Land Reform Act, that is also a great milestone in Kerala. After Land Reform Act, each and every family got a piece of land as their own and the housing campaign also started. Government took the leadership to build houses for the poor that is continuing now itself. In Kerala, the second Penrai Sarkar also continuing the, the housing program that is life mission. Last government, the first Penrai government declared four missions following the previous left governments. One is the reforms in education sector, education reforms mission, and the other is the reforms in health sector, Ardra mission, and one is Haridha Kerala mission to rejuvenate the wells and the rivers to reproduce the groundwater, everything, cleaning, etc. That is a very revolutionary thing 
and the fourth one is life mission we are uh, taking the uh, numbers of the persons who have no houses to reside no land no houses and we were building houses for the houseless homeless people in kerala that is also a revolutionary thing last uh, government the first penrai uh, government built more than 3 lakh houses for the homeless and uh, give priority to the widows and uh, uh, the single women family and they got houses for their own that is also a revolutionary thing without the practical thing like this we cannot make the emancipation of women in kerala the not only the literacy rate but in some indices of health also we are in the forefront the child mortality rate that was also again become a revolutionary achievement in 2016 when the first penrai sarkar came to office the child mortality rate was 12 out of 1000 live birth but we want to have a single digit on that and we fight hard we fought hard we had a stg uh, for our ourselves in our state the sustainable development goal 22 goals we declared in health center and education sector also we declared some goals and in health sector we give focus to newborn child pregnant mothers and the health of the women and we got a very good achievement after the mission and when we examine in 2020 the child mortality rate go below 6 out of 1000 live births and niti ayogs report came and it is 5.4 in 2020 and that's a great achievement we worked on the women and child sector for that and maternal mortality rate also we worked hard to save the poor women from maternal mortality and we improved the delivery units all the delivery units we improved a lot to hospital infection control and to examine examination of the pregnant mother frequently and also to find out whether they are anemic or not and what is the health condition of the women and we achieved a lot in 2016 our maternal mortality rate is 67 out of 1 lakh birth and the un declaration came on 2015 and the sdg goal came sdg out of the sdg 17 sdg goals sdg is the third component is on health and it contains also the women health issue and uh, un declared that up to 2030 we should achieve one goal that the maternal mortality rate should be reduced to 70 out of this 1 lakh births and our government central government also declared that all the states should work hard to reduce the maternal mortality rate to 70 but at that time kerala's maternal mortality rate is 67 but we declared our own god we had a very good slogan on that that is 30 by 20 and 20 by 30 30 by 20 and 20 by 30 we have a very good team to work on that doctors and nurses asha workers a expert group especially for that and we work hard when we examined it in 2019 the maternal mortality rate reduced to 43 out of 1 lakh births from 67 to 43 and we got some awards from central government i went the sm minister at that time and seven states got some awards from central government to keep the maternal mortality rate up to 70 but we got, kerala got two awards one is to make it below 70 and the other is the lowest in india uh, for the lowest in india and that is the left government's aim 
and left government's practical work to achieve the, these things. But when we speak about that, and also the uh, male-female sex ratio also, that is also good in Kerala. 1,084 females for 1,000 males. That is the sex ratio in Kerala. Nowadays, there is a thing that 0 to 6 age groups, it had fallen. We didn't know what happened uh, then. Somebody is asking always was to give and a very leadership is asking us what, why it is happening in Kerala. Is there any male preference, a son preference there? There is, it is not uh, uh, visual in our society because if a family have two sons, they are waiting for a little girl also, the third child in Kerala. That is the cultural situation or social condition in Kerala. But we cannot say fully like that. Maybe some biological reason or maybe some thing in guys. Uh, I cannot say, totally deny that thing. But there is no visual thing like sun preference in Kerala. And we are working on that also. But among these good things, we can say that there are two great laws in Kerala or drawbacks in Kerala. One is the low work participation rate for among women. The national work participation rate is 24, I think. Something round like that. But in Kerala, it is about 30%. But during this COVID situation, it became low. It became low in nationally and it became low in our state also. We are fighting against that thing. How can we emancipate the woman without bringing the woman to the social works, social production? The Engels and all other Marx and Engels, our left thinkers said that the emancipation of women can happen only when women come out from the home to work for the social production. And we are also working on that. How to bring back children or bring out children as these women from home to society to work. And our Kudumbasri is one of the very good measures on that. We formed the self-help group called Kudumbasri in 1998 onwards. And now, lakhs of women are there in Kudumbasri, I will put up for Kudumbasri self-help group. They are coming out and forming little groups and they are having some social reform activities and also entrepreneurship. Kudumbasri is encouraging people, encouraging women to have some entrepreneurship in the society to make women training members, little bit, but it becomes a good inspiration for women to come out from the kitchen or from the from home to the society and to become a social worker. Now we are giving skill development training to Kudumbasri workers, not only a small scale unit of entrepreneurship, but to have a skilled work or skill development help industry to enter into IT sector and all the modern sectors for their entrepreneurship and they are having so much activities on that and they are giving uh, wages for poor women and women are getting works through Kudumbasri also. And there are small scale industries. In Kerala, we introduced the gender audit in each and every department. And gender budgeting is there. And we are examining whether each and every department is doing gender friendly. And what is their budget? What is their activities? Is there any gender component in each and every department? We are examining that gender audit is there. And that way also, we are trying to take women out of the home-based activities or uh, the slavery inside the home. And uh, the other thing, not only the work participation, the other evil is definitely the increasing violence against women. The societal attitude, it is not changing fully. 
even though there are so many social reformers so many women fighters uh, there were there were from the chiriyama to the so many brave women who fought against women oppression but the society is not changed fully the patriarchal attitudes are there in the society and now we are fighting against that thing our government is also doing so many things to reduce the patriarchal or to get rid of the patriarchal views and when i was there in the government i am dealing with i was dealing with not only health but also women and children and social justice department our government how the first penalai government formed a separate department for women previously it was under social justice department women children different abled transgenders and all ages the it was dealing with the uh, women and children social justice department but 2017 onwards we have a separate department on women and children and that department did a lot of thing for the emancipation of women at first we have the domestic violence rules we formed the domestic violence rules for the domestic violence act and we have so many seminars and brainstorming sessions and awareness campaigns about the domestic violence act domestic domestic violence are rampant in kerala i think comparatively maybe it is less in kerala but more than 30% women are undergoing domestic violence in kerala also sometimes it is severe and sometimes it is in a small scale but it is the domestic violence is there so we started campaign on domestic violence and and about the laws and about the uh, the uh, chances to uh, utilize the law for the poor people we are uh, having tv uh, shows and also in radio and printed media and also some we are utilizing social media we are making short films and uh, like the short videos on that and our slogan was no more compromise in venda vittu vircha we had a great campaign on that and be brave go ahead was another campaign and we conducted night walk uh, to uh, to make women brave to walk outside during night even the night but it is arranged so many women participated even ias officers when we organized that without political bias so many women came college girls came outside for the night walk it is a message someone asked me teacher you are taking women outside home at night what you are what is your intention night is for sleep for sleeping but we want to get the right to get outside at any time the women want that is that was the slogan and so many women participated and it was an inspiring campaign comrade and it is continuing in kerala and uh, uh, we introduced or appointed women protection officers on all the 14 district in kerala and gave ensured the services of an advocate to give protection order maintenance order and custody and residence order to get it easily there was there is a, there, there is services of an advocate also we appointed that we have 84 institutions recognized by women and children department as service providing centers etc i am not elaborating on this thing so many steps taken we have one stop centers in each and every district functioning very well and we started a special app during these covid days because the domestic violence increased during covid days hum tum tab kamre mein band ho at that time everyone is under uh, uh, inside the home uh, husband and wife and the uh, they talk one and two and start fighting each other and women suffered a lot they cannot even phone uh to the uh, department or the officials because the husband is sitting there or brother is sitting there father is sitting there and we created an app so that they can message uh, their grievances to our 
uh, up and we got so many messages and uh, we acted well to save them from these atrocities. That is why, that, that way, we decreased the, the, uh, the great atrocities or uh, murders or suicides, etc. that become low because of these activities. And we started a on-call centre uh, called 181, Mitra 181. Under the Women and Children Department, we started Mitra 181. Any woman can call at any time to 181. And there, 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 there will be our team. And uh, uh, we got, in 2020, we got 126,821 complaints through Mitra 181. At once, we started action on that. Out of this, about 30,000 was according to uh, about the domestic violence. And we acted well. I am not uh, bringing each and everything here, but gender awareness campaign and uh, the change in the uh, society, patriarchal mind of the society, change in the attitude. Without the change in the minds of the people, minds of the society, we cannot ensure the emancipation of women. We cannot get to. There are laws there. Porsche Act is there. Domestic Violence Act is there. Several acts are there for women. But without knowing uh, where to uh, they, they, where to go for, to get these ad, uh, ad, acts enacted or to get help, we cannot uh, improve the condition of women. Especially the patriarchal society is there. The policy of central government is there, and we should have to fight against both feudalist culture and capitalist consumerist society, and also to improve or the thinking of left thinking. The socialist model of society only can give complete freedom for women, and we should campaign for a socialist society. It is written in our constitution, everything. Uh, democracy, secularism, socialism, everything is there in our own preamble. The very preamble of, of the constitution is giving assurance. Democracy means perfect equality and opportunity. Socialism means the actual democracy. But without having the change to socialist mode of society, we cannot have complete freedom. But we have to fight to get individual response or get uh, something in the society. Uh, according to the uh, experience. And we are fighting, and AIDWA is fighting, CPAM is fighting. I request all of the society, all of who gathered here, to join in the fight. We can fight together, we can achieve some result, and the end result is after the revolution, it will happen. Someone is asking whether the revolution is happening or not. Someone has never happened. Sometimes someone are saying, but it is happening. Some revolution is happening. Even in Kerala, after 1957 onwards, everything happened. That is the word. So 1957, a revolution happened. That is land reforms. The piece of land, ownership of a piece of land, that is a revolution. But the health revolution, that will also happen. We should have to. No other choice in front of us. Then we should have to fight for that. And should be fair to fight to emancipate women for women's equality and empowerment in Kulab Siddhartha.